you're listening to the Prepper Recon Podcast. For questions, comments, and podcast archives, go to PrepperRecon.com. Ready-Made Resources is a trusted name in the Prepper community because they've been around for 18 years. They offer great prices on night vision, water filtration, long-term storage food, solar energy components, and provide free technical service. Get ready for an uncertain future at ReadyMadeResources.com. Hey, Preppers and Patriots. This is the second half of my interview with John Theo. Enjoy the show. The reminders that we live in a dangerous world are nonstop. Um, lately we've had the California wildfires. We talked about them earlier in the show yeah. and they gave way to torrential rains, uh, which caused massive mudslides, which have killed several people. I think the, the last count that I saw was something like 17, but I know that there were still so many people missing that, that, that number's yeah. bound to keep going up. Um, there's just, there's massive, massive amounts of, of mud to, to, and debris to remove. And I'm sure that they'll just, they'll be finding bodies probably six months from now in that kind of yeah. a mess. Um, I guess the obvious lesson from that disaster, other than, you know, not being near something that, that, that people would call Babylon, uh, is, yeah. is that, you know, if you live in a, in a, in a place that, that's been, um, uh, burned out by fire, you should you should be very very aware of the weather in in your surroundings if you live on a, a, a sloped area where where something right. like that can happen because once that fauna is gone there's nothing to to drink up the water and and uh, it'll just wash the mud straight down the hill that's been there for years and years and years because it's had plant life holding it in place right. the the roots of those plants holding it in place and once they're burned out and gone now it's just basically it's like a snow avalanche it's just waiting for a catalyst to come so uh can you think of some other lessons that we could that we could learn from the california wildfires and the the floods and the mudslides out there well i think just california in general what what i think about with california's population density i mean it's just uh uh, if I was out there, I'd want I'd be drastically f- trying to find a way to get out of there. I mean, so that is co- you know the population density compounds every problem you just mentioned. Um, on top of the fact they're doing forced vaccinations and you know it's hyper liberal, it's coming to socialist state, all that's even just more incentive to get out. But yeah, it's um, it's it's like a powder keg out there. And don't forget that yeah, the earthquakes. I mean, people are saying the big one's coming, the big one's coming. I'm, it's it's just. You wouldn't want. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful state, but coastal California. I, I just. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near it. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near it. I think. Um, I, I. Part of the reason why we came down here is is it's just country and there's just land and there's it's not dense and you have relatively moderate weather and I'm thinking you know I don't always think like oh what happens if the grid goes down in the world ends but you know if I was coming to this planet for the first time in I'm trying to find a place to, to land in the United States. This is pretty moderate. And this is, would be one of the places I would consider. And I'm sure the redoubt areas are the same way. They're, they're moderate climates and their population density and that sort of thing. But, yeah, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near California right now. And I really have a lot of respect for Christians that are out there. I know, like, Ray Comfort and living his ministries out there. And they're in the – they're preaching in, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah. And – uh, I, that's just not my calling. I, I felt that way back in Massachusetts. It's gone so liberal. And I and I was partnering with someone that was part of Campus Crusade who was trying to get onto the college I was working at, and they were giving her a hard time. And I just saw the fire in her eyes, and I just didn't have it. And I came to Christ later in life, and I think my calling is more uh, to warn the church and to uh, – that's more my ministry, like to wake the church up and to uh, – so I kind of feel like I fell back, uh, back to friendly, in a friendly area um, where there's more Christians and there's more conservative and there's more freedoms. And I feel like my role, unlike this girl's role up in Massachusetts, is to is to warn the church down here. And people, someone said to me a week ago, a lot of people come down here, a lot of Yankees come down here and think they can change things. I'm like, and I cut them off. I said, I'm here to tell you not to change. <laughs> you guys have freedom. You guys have low taxes. You guys, uh, you know, you, you, it's Christianity. Christianity has still uh, permeated the culture down here. Don't change a thing. I'm here to be a cheerleader and tell you guys stay the course. 
because I know it's coming. It's at the it's at the front lines. It's at the gates. The gates being you know D.C. So you have Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Jersey, New York, D.C. Like those are all hyper liberal, and I know it's coming south. And I'm like here, to, you know, back in friendly territory. But I need to warn people it's coming, and you can see it with some of the elections in Virginia as well. But Virginia, unlike Massachusetts, has a balanced budget amendment. They got a lot of fail safes in place. So it's just nice to uh, know that there's still freedom in certain parts of the country. Whether or not that'll last, <laughs> we'll see. I have a theory that when this country, if this country falls to socialism, totalitarianism, I have this theory that Texas will be the last man standing, and then that'll be the last one to fall if it happens. <laughs> but that's just my theory. <laughs> Wow, we'll see because they are really pushing the limits of becoming a purple state because of the unmitigated inflow they've had uh, from the border. Yeah. And uh, and yeah. like you said, the, the population boom in Texas and the people that are wanting to get away from that and to get away from that. And I think they're going to see a lot more of it um, after the, the tax law because uh, they got a much lower – I don't know if they have no state tax – Federal, uh, if they have no state income tax, or they have a much whatever it is, it's much much lower than California's. California's is one yeah. of one of the highest oh, yeah. in the in the state, if not the the highest. Uh, so uh, I'm sure they're going to get a, a a much larger inflow. And uh, right. the the research I've been doing for uh, the book I'm working on right now, um, all of the all of the big cities in Texas are are way way over the line predominantly yeah. liberal i know austin is yeah i know austin, yeah, austin and houston liberal. and dallas yeah. and, and every single one of them and uh so you very well could be right you very well could be right the and, other thing they have going against them too is they don't have state tax but they do have a high property tax which to me is i i think that's a real tie to freedom i did a whole video on my youtube channel uh, about property um Life, liberty, and the pursuit in the pursuit of private property, which was what Jefferson originally wrote, mm-hmm. and private property uh, and freedom is tied so close together. And I think that's that is one thing they have working against them. Virginia has a low property tax, at least in the area I'm in, and uh, I think that that promotes freedom. And it, it, up north, you it's not a big deal to have a property tax of eight to ten thousand dollars with one acre of land and a two thousand square foot house. It's insane. You don't own your properties up north, which was another reason why I left. It's really becoming socialized, and you don't get anything for your tax dollars up there. You literally have to pay $20 a week for extra trash bags to put your trash out. You can't do – you have to pay extra for public schools, for sports and music. It's like the property taxes are crazy, and the taxes in general up north are crazy. You, you, you said the – you were talking about the big one that's coming to California. Um, yeah. The day we're recording this, they just had a huge tsunami warning after a 7.8 magnitude along that ring of fire uh, up right, near Alaska. the 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 Alaskan coast. Um, they had some uh, they had some video footage of just basically a, a line of cars trying to get out of Halifax, and it was just a parking lot, and and these people yeah. were not moving. Um, so. Uh, we don't. We never know when that when that's going to come. And then, so it's it's California. You've got everybody along the Oregon and Washington coast to the uh, Cascadia mm-hmm. zone there. Which same thing. They're they're expecting the big one any day. They say it's right. been overdue for for years and years. So yeah, um, that everybody up there has got to watch out. I guess from from what I saw in the news today. Looking at all those people trying to get out and everybody stuck in, in gridlock, I think that the key takeaway from that is that you need to have your bug out bag packed because yeah. the people that left two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes after that warning was 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 issued, those people got out. Yeah. The people that, that left 15 minutes, a half hour, 45 minutes after that, that was issued – yeah, they're just sitting in their car waiting for a wave. Yeah, exactly. You know, you'd be better off in the house. Is, yeah, and the other important thing is having enough gas. I think I was listening to your podcast a few weeks ago when you were talking about the exodus out of Florida with your team, and because of the hurricane. And I, I don't, I thought you said you didn't have to stop for gas, or you had extra gas cans covered up. That is huge. 
huge because if you have to stop, I mean, you should always have your gas tank at least half full at a minimum. And in the winter, probably full tank. But you had extra gas that you didn't have to stop. I mean, it, it you could be at a gas station for four hours if there's like a mass exodus happening. I mean, I stopped at a gas station coming back from Baltimore, going back to Boston, Mass, a few years ago during Thanksgiving weekend. And you would have thought it was the end of the world, Mark. And it was just because it was Thanksgiving weekend. <laughs> I can't imagine. I turned to my wife, I'm like, what would happen if the grid was down? This is nothing. It's just a holiday. So... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, yeah you, we you, keep we keep um, we keep about thirty gallons on hand. So that's a that's a, that's a good chunk of gas, right? And there. so that's you know that can get us out of definitely get us out of Florida. No, oh, and we right. never get lower yeah. than we never get lower than a quarter tank. We see it when it hits that quarter tank, we we top off, and then those yeah. those gas cans, I, I rotate those out every six months and and put uh, yeah. fuel stabilizer in it and and all of that. Right. And so you know when the storm came, because by the time everybody had figured out, hey, you know this thing might hit us, uh, the generators were already gone, the gas cans were already gone. Right. You know, the right. run on the groceries hadn't started yet, but those things where, you know, a Home Depot or a Lowe's might have five or ten generators, it just takes right. a couple of guys to, you know, uh, one person could buy all five, you right. know, and if they've, right. got, if they've got a hundred gas tanks, if they've got a hundred gas cans in stock at each store and five people come in and, and buy four each, they're gone. So right. that's not something that, that, that they have – that's not stocked up for uh, – they don't have a huge storeroom. What you see there is what you get. And then when they sell those, then they put in an order and the truck comes in three or four days right. later and, and yeah, restocks those. Time shipping, right. So right, time shipping. Exactly. Yeah, that's not stuff you can buy when you need it. You buy it. It's like it's like, uh, it's like auto insurance. You, know, you buy it before you have the wreck or you don't buy it at all. So yeah, uh, yeah, and and you know, and if we had an event, you know, it, the the gas could be gone anyway to where you wouldn't be able to to, to fill up the cans anyway. So you got to buy the cans, right. keep them full, uh, put stabilizer in them, and uh, right. make sure they're not any, they're not anywhere where they're going to be a, a fire hazard. Right. I, it, a show you could do um, in the future is on uh, gas versus diesel. I would love to get um, one of my goals. I'd love to get a diesel truck for the sole thing that for a myriad of reasons. But diesel, you could you could theoretically keep it for years, whereas gas can only last for I think nine months to a year max. I just like that having that cushion that you could have you know an oil tank in your house. There's number two diesel in it, and that could potentially be your backup fuel if you needed it. So it's just. Uh, I'm kind of a truck geek anyway, so. Yeah, yeah, and, and diesel, there's, you know, if in a post-apocalyptic situation, you can run, you know, used, mo you can run it on motor oil, jet fuel, yeah. uh, you can drain used motor oil, if ever, if everybody's car is yeah. parked on the side of the road, you could drain the, the used motor oil out of it, uh, if you knew that, that yeah. it wasn't synthetic. Uh, right. I guess, I guess, if, if you, I guess if you're a, if, if you're a real motorhead, you're going to probably be able to look at it. It, it used motor oil and tell you it's, if it's synthetic or, or not, but uh, but I don't know. You could it, what if it's a blend? I don't know. So uh, I yeah. I wouldn't want to do that unless it was my absolute last uh, resort. Yeah, I agree. But uh, it will it'll run in jet fuel. Jet fuel is very very similar to diesel. Um, corn yeah, oil. If you, you can gas, if you had to stop for gas, the lines are going to be up there down the road for gas but generally the diesel lines are, aren't aren't that long so yeah. that's another benefit and as well. diesel engines are much much more reliable and they last you know yeah. you get a, a half a I million like miles the, yeah and the old diesel too a lot of them will be probably emp proof a lot of the old like pre you know early 90s 80s diesels as well yeah but again it's just it's fun it's fun to war game the stuff to talk about it i hope it never happens but oh yeah absolutely oh uh, back to the bag out bag uh you know sure the the people that got that if there would have been a tsunami, the people that left first would be the only ones that that uh, would have lived to tell about it. So uh, recommendation out there for folks, uh, you know, if you keep 
if you keep your, you know, a flash drive that's got all your important documents that you should have that. You should right. have a flash drive that has all of your important documents scanned onto it. And, uh, yeah. you know, that might be something you want to keep in a safe along with your valuables. You know, if you keep gold coins or, you know, some cash, I think it's a really good idea to keep a good chunk of yeah. cash outside of the banking system because I think that's a risk that people just aren't paying attention to. Uh, yeah. because there's so many things, um, I'm reading right now, I'm reading, uh, um, uh, Koppel's book lights out, Ted Koppel's book lights out and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they could shut down the, the banking system and, and that would be it. Yeah. And, and we don't know how long it could be gone. And, uh, right. and, and if it's shut down, they're probably not taking credit cards. And if there's anything open and anybody's selling anything, it's going to be cash and cash only. So either you yeah. have the cash or, or you don't. And, uh, but you know, if you're keeping, all, if you're keeping a good lot of cash around the house, you know, that probably needs to be in a safe and you probably don't want that in your right. bug out bag. So, uh, maybe a good idea is to keep your bug out bag right next to your safe. So if you've got a boogie, you know, it's all your valuables aren't in the bug out bag, but it's just a matter of opening the safe, grabbing it, sticking it in the bug out bag, closing the safe, spinning yeah. the dial and walking out the door, you know, yeah. and, and being yeah. one of the first people out, one of the first people on the roads and get in the fast lane and, and punch it and get out of there. Uh, right. Because, uh, it's, it's, it's bad to get in gridlock. And, uh, and yeah. you're not, you're not going to get out and you're going to get in a worse situation than, than if you would have just stayed home. If, if you're, if you're one of the laggards. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's not even like a, a tinfoil hat thing anymore. I mean, this is a realistic scenario. You were in a realistic scenario in Florida where you got hit by a massive hurricane and you had to implement an exit strategy. I mean, this is not just for preppers or for 10, 12 half people anymore. This, this is like real life. You know, church shootings happen all the time. You need to have situational awareness, even in church. You need to have situational awareness when you're out to dinner. You need to worry about, you know, not worry, uh, but you need to be aware of, of everything now. And it's not theoretical anymore. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Whether your plan is to bug out or bug in, CampingSurvival.com has all of your preparedness needs, including fish antibiotics, long-term storage food, and water filters. Use coupon code PREPARECON for 5% off your order at CampingSurvival.com. Trading Post in the Woods is ran by veteran crisis responders who know how important it is to be prepared. They specialize in comprehensive natural survival remedy kits, preparedness and homesteading supplies, as well as skills training. Visit them online today at tradingpostinthewoods.com. Yeah, and you just talked about church shootings. We just had another school shooting today, the day that we're uh, recording this in uh, yeah. western Kentucky. So maybe that's another um, good reason to get your kids out of the public school, even if you don't mind yeah. being taught atheism and uh, homosexuality and transgenderism. Um, yeah. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah, and these, these these stories don't even make the front headlines anymore. It's so common now. We've become so oh no, yeah, it's just a uh, little about, flash. Oh, did you, it's, you know, did you hear there's another church shooting today? Did you hear there's another school shooting today? It's like no big deal. And like these are people's lives that are ending, and people need to wake up. I think the church is finally. Fi I've been screaming for years about this, but I think churches are start finally starting to wake up. I don't think there should ever be a church shooting ever again because all you need to do is have. A, a a scenario in place, even if it's just find a police officer that attends your church and have him sit in the back and carry. I mean, if someone came into our church, they would get blasted. So I, our church, I think, is okay. But I'm just saying, like, churches should be awake now after all these sh shootings, and they need to put a process in place. My old church back in Boston, I was hounding these guys for years. I'm like, just do something. And finally, as I was leaving, I think they did do something. But I was just like, it's not rocket science. You don't need to, like, overanalyze it. Have a couple of the elders who are legally able to carry sit in the back row. Have an off-duty police officer who goes to church sit in the back row. End of story. Like, it's not rocket science. So as far as I'm concerned, there should never be a church shooting in this country again because there should be um, something in place. But that's just frustration talking. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Hawaiians had a big scare a few weeks back. They got an alert over their state's emergency warning oh, system that said gosh. an ICBM was incoming. Yeah. Um, this yeah. went on for about 38 minutes before uh, they got the alert that, that it was a false alarm. So you had people 
calling their families on the mainland to, to say goodbye. I saw videos of, uh, of, of, uh, People that were just, you know, distraught. Uh, one was a little boy that was crying because his dad had went to, you know, was going to look for a job, and he was he was crying because he wasn't going to get to die with his dad. I mean, it was it was really really terrifying stuff. Um, yeah, you know, if it's an ICBM, if you're on ground zero, you just need to be ready to meet your maker. You need to make sure that yeah. uh, you've 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 confessed everything you need to confess. Um, that you're you're living the kind of life that you want to that yeah. you want to be living. Uh, because we're all going to meet him and we're all going to stand face to face and, uh, we're all going to be called to account. Um, you know, the blood, the blood of Jesus is our ticket in, but you got to bring your own spending money. So, you know, are you living the kind of life that's going to affect eternity? Uh, are you going to have the, the the kind of eternity that you want to have? Because eternity is a long time. 150 million years is a long time. That's just a scratch of, of eternity. And, uh, uh, but other than other than being ready to meet your maker, I think uh, a good lesson from from that ICBM alert is uh, you know get your iodine because if you're, you're if you're at ground zero, nothing's going to really help you except a, a, a bomb shelter that's that's three stories underground. And if you've got that, you know, glory hallelujah. Most of us don't yeah. have the wherewithal to to make those type of preparations. Uh, but if you're farther away, there are a few things you can do. You can you can uh, duct tape plastic around your windows to keep to keep right. out excess radiation. You can make sure you've got iodine stocked. Um, the iodine pills are you know they're they're pre portioned out to where you know exactly how many to take. Uh, what iodine does is it mitigates the amount of radiation that your thyroid you absorb. will absorb. Right. Um, but I think the iodine drops are great too because. You know, yeah. you've got the dropper. Um, you get a lot more than if you're buying the the little pop out sheet of uh, of iodine. It's yeah. easier to store because it's a you you're storing a whole lot more of it because it's going to be a prolonged right. event. That radiation is going to be around for a while, especially if you're somewhere where right. where there's a, a nuclear reactor. If there's leakage like a Fukushima thing, you know you've got radiation all the time. Those those folks need to be taking iodine. Um, regularly every day for 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 years you know and yeah. um i think most studies show that most of us are iodine deficient anyway so it's it's right. uh it's a good thing almost to be taken on it anyway but uh, right. especially agree, something to have on hand right i keep both on hand and yeah it, iodine i think you're right i think most of us are iodine deficient and um so yeah i think that's a good idea or just not and also not live in hawaii on an island that's also good too. At least you want to be somewhere you can drive if possible. Yeah, yeah. Those people had no choice. They were like shooting fish in a barrel. They couldn't do anything. Yeah, you know, take a, a motorboat, and go somewhere. Like it's nothing you can do. You know, maybe maybe you can get to the other side of the island if you're in the if you're on the populated side. If you can get to the other side, maybe maybe that gives you a chance. I don't know because you've got the whole big mountain yeah. in, in between you and the, the blast. I, I don't know, but it would, it'd be yeah. a, it'd be a bad bad situation. Yeah, that whole scenario was was just unfortunate. I, I felt so bad for the people there. I was watching people on, on the news sticking their children in the sewer system mm-hmm. to try and protect them. Yeah, it was just like, my gosh, what type of world are we living in? This is amazing. Uh, and, uh, and it wouldn't surprise me if that knucklehead from North Korea did something like this too. I mean, he's so crazy, but I, I don't know. He's so fat and gluttonous. I can't see him doing anything that would change his lifestyle, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he would be crazy enough to do something like that. Yeah, you just don't know what he, you don't know what he thinks. You don't know what his uh, you know, he's he's sort of worshipped as a god. And yeah. uh, you know, Peter Vincent Price been he's the nuclear strategist for the CIA and he's been on the show a couple times. And, you know, his his uh theory is is that, you know, he's been treated like a god. He's the third generation uh, totalitarian regime and he's lost all concept of reality. And you know yeah. he he may not be making rational decisions, and his 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 what he does may not have anything to do with uh, with reality, and it, it may not affect how his his decision tree. So uh, we yeah. don't know. We don't we don't really know. He's yeah. a he's he's a loose cannon at best. He is loose cannon. He is loose cannon. Yeah, I mean that is just an evil regime over there. What they're doing to people. Tens of millions of people have died under that. And they're considered, they call it, they used to refer to themselves as the first atheist regime, but no one ever makes movies about that or talks about that or, 
you know, talks about the tens of millions of people that have died over there um, because it's, you know, not uh, not in their real house. They want to, you know, they want to make fun of Christians instead. Yeah, and uh, that whole North Korea thing kind of pokes a hole in the prosperity gospel too, doesn't it? Because uh, yeah, you know, yeah. those yeah. people have got faith; they've got real faith, and it's it's not it's not yeah. affecting their bank account whatsoever. Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I read about people in the Middle East, Africa, North Korea, and what those Christian, my brothers and sisters in Christ, are going through, and it's it's crazy. And um, yeah, it's 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 yeah. Prosperity gospel is not applicable. And, that's for uh, sure. And I know the, the Christians in Asia are, are praying for uh, Christians in the United States to be persecuted, so we'll up our faith because we've become so complacent over here. And I kind of don't blame them. That's the purge. That's the thing that purges the wheat from the chaff. You know, I don't want it. I don't want to get purged. But man, you know, I I can't blame. Like you said, I can't blame them for praying that. I. I you know, yeah. uh, they're they're thinking about they're thinking about the other side, and we're you know I I think a lot about this side about you know my lifestyle and how I want things to be for my daughter and all that kind of thing here, uh, you know. But I I spend I I think a lot about the other side as well, and I'm I'm trying to you know make sure I get a good retirement account over there and 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 those kinds of things. But you know I, I'm not. Uh, and I and I know that it would it would wake a lot of my brothers and sisters up and, and get a lot of them out of their out of their uh, their complacency and then I know it would purge out a lot of people that that um, are, are just chaff that that aren't going to make it anyway mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. it would have a, a huge purifying effect on the on, on the American church and and we well, probably need it and well we definitely yeah. need it but I just man. And I think it's probably yeah. common. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I think their prayer yeah. is probably going to get answered. I, I would, I would, I, have, I, I would imagine that, yeah. that Trump will be the last, the last. Uh, you know, I'm not the hugest Trump fan in the world, and I think everybody knows that. I but know. he's such yeah. a much better pick than than, than what we could have oh. ended up with. And I think the pendulum yeah. is going to swing so far left next time. I think it's going to just, it's going to really smack some people upside the head. And, uh, I'm afraid you're right. I'm afraid you're right. I just hope, I think the best, and I, this is kind of pessimistic, but I think what people are going to become complacent, you know, the dollars are 26,000, Trump that's going to fix everything. And the left said that about Obama. And I think the best we can hope for with Trump is just he's going to buy us some time, Yeah. you know, to prepare and to just, uh, you know, get out of the matrix, get your kids out of school. I like get, you know, I think that's the best we can hope for. Yeah. Evil, I tell my wife this all the time, evil does not sleep. You defeat it in one way, it'll rear its head in another way. I mean, it's, think about Planned Parenthood. If they, we were somehow, Trump was able to put them out of business today, five years from now, they'd rear their head some other way. And that doesn't mean you don't keep fighting, but evil doesn't sleep. And, you know, this is not the time to sit back and put your hands behind your head and say, you know, the good times are here. Hopefully, we get some peace time and Christian persecution is eased, you know, and we get time. But I just don't see... Yeah, like you said, the pendulum is probably going to swing the other way, and it's going to swing hard. And once it does, you know, if like you said, maybe a Texas goes blue or some other states go blue. I mean, I mean, go Democrat. It, it'll never go back, ever go back, and we'll all be living in Chicago. Yeah, you can't. You Which can't is have post-apocalyptic. You can't have another Republican president without Texas. They just you, yeah, you can't, you can't get to two seventy without them. Yeah, and, and the left knows that, too. Uh -huh. and, the, and the other thing with Trump is he's got the media against him. He's got the Democrats against him. He's got the majority of the Republicans against him, too, a bunch of all those rhinos who are basically, in my book, Democrats. So, sure, yeah. You know, although they, he, he owns – he has you know the Congress, he has the House, he's got, he's got the White House, but he really doesn't. He really doesn't. If you did the real numbers, like Lindsey Graham, he's really a Democrat. John McCain, he's really a Democrat. You know, you have these Republicans – that are really Democrats. So if you do the real numbers, he really doesn't have everything. You know what I mean? Right. John I have a joke so... with my wife. We have a we have a governor up in Massachusetts who's a Republican. I said, you know, the joke is, what do you call a Republican in Massachusetts? You call him a Democrat. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, John. Thank you so much for making time for us today. You've given us a lot of interesting stuff it. to to think about. Tell us one more time. Uh, these two new books, uh, tell us the names, tell us uh, where folks can get them. Um, 
so it's mi- the Mission Trip series. It's three books in the series, Mission Trip, Mission Trip, Genesis, and Exodus. And then there's a novella called Clark as well. They can get them uh, Amazon.com, JohnTheo.com. But before I go, Mark, I just want to say, and I meant to say this the last time I was on, I want to, I've read, I'm a, a writer who got into prepping, and I've read a lot of prepper fiction out there, and I, I've realized that a lot of the prepper fiction will be trying to teach lessons, and they kind of sacrifice some of the writing style and this and that to get the message across. And so, and, but I wanted to say on air that your books are, are phenomenal and that your writing style is phenomenal. Uh, the character development, story arcs, everything are just top notch. And I just wanted to make sure I say that on air. I was so mad at myself. I didn't say that last time. I really enjoyed Dave of Elijah and um, yeah, keep up the good work, Mark. John, thank you so much. That's uh, that's uh, that's a real honor to, to hear that from you because uh, like I said, your, your writing is just, it's it's uh, fantastic, and uh, Clark. Oh, it's, I really highly recommend it to everybody. Um, just a, a fantastic uh, twist uh, on that character arc is just uh, blew me away. It was just it was fantastic. Oh, so I really and that one's only ninety nine cents. So I really hope folks will 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 check that one out. That'll give them a, a little taste of uh, of what you're about. And then after that, I think they're all going to want to uh, go read everything in the Mission Trip series. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. I appreciate you having me on. Thank you very much. The Days of Elijah, Book 4, The Seventh Vial, by bestselling author Mark Goodwin, is now available in paperback, Kindle, and audio edition. The ultimate battle, which will decide the fate of heaven and earth, has finally come. Everett and Courtney Carroll have fared better than most through the past seven years of the Great Tribulation, but the eve of Armageddon, refuses to let them live out the last hours of this present age without conflict, trouble, and persistent peril. The Bible has prophesied of the seven vials of God's wrath, the final judgments which will utterly destroy what's left of a decimated planet. These calamities will bring a plague of festering boils upon the followers of the Antichrist. Rivers and seas will turn to blood, and a global earthquake will raise the cities of the earth to the ground. All of this in the midst of the war to end all wars. It won't be the first time they've been trapped between a rock and a hard place, but it might be the last. Don't miss the final chapter of this end times sensation. Get your copy from Amazon.com today.